in the Hebrew that she believed that she was the right woman for Samson. So you see the steps unfolding. This man's going down. He saw her. And then he talked to her. And then you'll see in verse 8 the third step that he took. The Bible says he turned in onto her. Now it was during the third visit, during the third visit, that Samson got distracted. And he turned aside to see the carcass of the lion. I wonder, can you see this man this evening? He turns aside and he sees the old carcass of the lion that he had killed. And then the carcass of the lion, this is very important, in the carcass of the lion was a swarm of bees and a big cauldron of honey. We're told that Samson took the honey. He filled his hands with the honey of the world and he gave some of the honey to his parents. Did you notice this, what it says? It says that after a time, did you notice that little phrase, after a time? After a time, he returned back to Timnah. How long was it before he returned? Do you know how long it was? It was almost a year, almost a year before he returned back to Timnah. Almost a year since the lion had roared against him. A year had elapsed. A year had elapsed. And he returns to the scene. After a year had gone by, nothing had changed. Nothing had changed. This man was still far off from God. After a year, nothing had changed. This man was still far off from God. This man was still traveling down the road of disobedience. After a year, nothing had changed. He was still living in sin. He was still practicing sin. He was still immersed in sin. It was a long year. It was a wasted year. But after a year, nothing had changed. Let me ask you, as you listen online, Almost a year has passed and nothing has changed. Has anything changed with you? A year ago, as you listened to me, a year ago, you were a sinner on the road to hell. Has anything changed? A year has come and gone. And tonight, as you listen, you're still a sinner and you're still walking on the road to hell. After a year, the Bible says, Samson returned to the wrong place. That's the period I want to preach on. A year had passed. Nothing had changed. Are you here tonight? And a year has passed in the United Kingdom 125,000 people have died. A year has passed. And you're still not saved. Nothing has changed. What about the place? Not only the period, what about the place? Samson made a mistake. He went down to this woman and he encountered the land. Can I tell you this? My friend, as you listen to me, if you go to the wrong places, if you go to the wrong places, you will encounter the land. If you go to the places of this world, don't be surprised if you encounter the land. Of course, the Bible speaks of the land. It says that Satan is a roaring land. Satan is a roaring land seeking whom he can devour. And Samson played with sin. He went to the wrong places. He hadn't learned his lesson. And as a dog goes back to its vomit, so Samson goes back to this wrong place. 
he went to their own place, the vineyards of Timnah. Is that where you are tonight as you listen to me in the house? Have you been to their own places? Are you playing with sin? Sins of the flesh? Is that what's keeping you back from Christ after a year? Playing in a sin. He turns back again. And he comes to the wrong place. But not only his return, I want you to see his reminder. He got distracted from the woman and he turns aside to the carcass of the land. Turns aside to the carcass of the land. He places himself in the place of danger. And Samson came to the carcass of the land. What is the lesson of the honey? What is the lesson of the carcass of the land? What is God saying to you today? Samson turned to the carcass of the land. And he, he delighted with what he found in the carcass. He took, he filled his hands, filled his hands with the honey and the carcass. He couldn't get enough of the honey. He couldn't get enough of pleasure. He makes reference to the sweetness of the honey. Do you know what he says? He makes reference to the sweetness of the honey. You know, the sweetness of sin, it only lasts for a season. The sweetness of sin is like the broken cisterns. I've tried the broken cisterns, Lord, but ah, oh, the waters failed. The sweet taste of sin only lasts for a season. But sin and eternity turns to bitterness. And he comes and he takes of the honey within the carcass. Can I tell you this? In order for him to take the honey, do you know what he had to risk? When you hear this, in order for him to get out the honey, do you know what he had to risk? He had to risk the sting of the bees. In order for him to access the honey, he had to risk being stung by the bees. But his attraction his attraction to the honey overcame his fear of danger and he risked the sting of the bees in order to get the sweetness of the honey. You know the story of David? David was convicted of adultery. David took the risk of sin. David was convicted of adultery. Can I tell you this about it? David thought he'd escaped the bees. Until one day, as you listen to me in the house, one day a man came to David. A man called Nathan. And he just stood and he pointed out to David. And he said to David, Thou art the man. The guilty man. And the, David felt the effects of the sting of the bees upon his life that day. David's sin affected him all through his life until the day he died. Samson sold himself out for a handful of honey. You could sell your soul for a handful of honey, the world's honey, only to find that you lost your soul for all eternity. Can I tell you this? Is it worth the risk of dying without Christ? Is the world's honey, is it worth the risk of going to a lost eternity? You know there's no honey in hell. There is no honey in hell. Neither is there water. Neither is there water to cool your tongue. Always remember that whenever you suck at the world's honey, there's a swarm of bees waiting. 
in our factory, in our factory, there's a sign up over the chemicals. And the sign over the chemical says, touch not, taste not, handle not, handle not. And in verse 9, you'll see Samson's silence. Did you notice the silence in verse 9? It says that he told not his parents. Why did he tell not his parents? On his way home, he said nothing about his sin. Am I speaking to a young person tonight? And you're sitting listening to me in the house. And you tell not your parents. You slip into the house at night. You slip into the house at night under the cover of darkness. And you're like Samson. You're embarrassed. You're embarrassed by your sin to tell your parents. He didn't tell his parents. Well, I'll tell you this. You might wipe your mother's eye. And maybe you'll wipe your father's eye. But there's one thing sure, you'll never wipe God's eye. Whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. Paul, like, Paul likens the sting of a bee to the sting of death. Paul says in 1 Corinthians, that great gospel verse we preach at the funerals, here's Paul's take on the sting of the bee. O oh, death! O oh, death, where is thy sting? That's where Paul links this sting of the beast. O oh, death, where is thy sting? Tonight your heart can be made clean. Tonight the vilest defender can be made clean. You say, David, David, how can my heart be made clean? Your heart can be made clean by the blood of of the Lamb of God. Can you hear something sob? Did you look at the verse in verse 16, chapter 16? Let me, let me read Samson's sob to you. Here is Samson's sob. Maybe you've never saw it in the Bible before. Here is Samson's sob. Oh Lord God, remember me, I pray thee, and strengthen me, I pray thee, only this once. Can you listen to a sob tonight? This man said it with a sob. Oh, Lord God, remember me just once. Just once. Friend, are you in the meeting tonight and you're defeated by the devil that is well? Are you in the meeting tonight and you're chained by the chains of sin. Let me ask you as you listen. Will you tonight pray Samson's prayer? Will you pray Samson's prayer? Oh Lord God, remember me just this once. Oh Lord God, give me just one more chance. And just as God heard Samson's cry, God tonight will hear your cry. God will hear your cry. And by his mighty power, and by the power of the blood of the Lamb, God will hear your cry. And if you pray Samson's prayer, Oh God, remember me. Oh God, remember me just this once. God will hear your cry. And through the power of of the shed blood of the Lord Jesus. The chains of sin can be broken. And tonight, in this last Sunday in March, you can be set free. I beg of you tonight, let go of what's holding you back from coming to Christ. Christ is the great emancipator. We sing the great hymn, He breaks the power of cancel sin. He sets the prisoner free. His blood can make the foulest clean. His blood, praise God, avails for me. Friend, can I ask you? 
Can I ask you, maybe you're a fisherman? Maybe you're a fisherman, maybe you own a boat. Can I ask you this, dear fisherman? For what shall it profit a man if a man shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? Many's a man has lost their soul for a handful of honey. The things of earth are but for a season. Eternity is forever. Whatever decision you make, I want you to listen to me. If you're listening online, whatever decision you make for eternity, you must make it in time. For after death, after death, the Bible says, then the judgment, you cannot change your destiny after you die. You cannot change your destiny when life is over. When your soul has left the body and you've gone out into eternity, it's too late. Now is the time to come. Now is the time to be saved. Did you notice this? And I'll finish. Did you notice this? Did you notice a strange thing? I want you to notice this. Did you notice that the last of the judges was blind? Samuel was blind. The last of the judges was blind. Did you notice that the last of the kings were blind? Zedekiah was blind. So the last of the judges was blind. The last of the kings was blind. Did you notice this, please? Did you notice in Revelation that the last church, what does it say about the last church? The last church is blind, it says. Blind. And Samson was blind. They did to him what Hitler, what Hitler did to the Jews. They got him and they put his two eyes out and he was blind. And at the end of his life, he prayed this great prayer. What was the great prayer? Here was his great prayer. He prayed, oh God, remember me just this once. It's a pity he didn't pray like that in his lifetime that he prayed in his death. Oh God, remember me just this once. Where I live, up in Kerry Duff. And I'll close with this. There was a girl who lived up the Duck Bracken Road. Up the Duck Bracken Road she lived. She came from a Christian home. Her mother and father were saved. They asked her to go to the meeting. And like Samson, she rebelled. She wouldn't go to the meeting. They asked her every night of the mission, will you go to the meeting? She wouldn't go to the meeting. And it came the last night of the meeting. And that day she went into Belfast and she bought herself a fancy dress, a lovely dress. The dress wasn't to go to church. Oh, the dress wasn't to go to church. The dress was bought to go to a dance in the Orange Hall. That's where the dress was for. She didn't go to the meeting that night. She went to the dance in the Orange Hall. And when she came home, the next day, she felt very seriously ill. A fever, a fever came over her. And she lay in the bed and she tossed and turned in the bed with a fever. Terrible fever. She lay in the bed suffering and they got the doctor for her and all hope was gone. And you know what somebody said to her? You know what somebody said to her? I went and get the dress. Go away and get the dress and bring it in, show her her dress, it'll maybe comfort her. Go away and get the dress, bring it in, it'll maybe comfort her. And they brought the dress into the bedroom. And as she lay dying, they brought the dress into the bedroom. You know what she said? She pulled herself up in the bed and she shouted at them, take that dress away. Take that dress away, for it cost me my soul. It cost me my soul. Friend, let me remember you tonight. Samson prayed, Lord, 
remember me. Remember me. Can I ask you, at the close of this meeting, at the close of this meeting, will you pray Samson's prayer tonight? In all your sin, you can be set free through the blood of the Lamb this evening. Will you pray his prayer as we close? What did he pray? Oh, Lord God, remember me. I pray thee and strengthen me. And then he said these words, only this once, only this once. If you'll pray his prayer, God will hear your cry. God is waiting to receive you now. The hands of Jesus are outstretched, bidding you to come. Will you come this evening and trust the Lord Jesus as your Savior? When the voice of Jesus called you, be in time. We sing it in the fisherman's mission. When the voice of Jesus called you, be in time. For in sin you longer wait, you may find no open gate, and your cry may be too late. Be in time. Be in time. If God has spoken to you this evening, and there's no doubt about it that God has spoken, if God has spoken to you this evening, as you listen online, or here in the church car park. Heed the voice of God. Turn while the Savior in mercy is pleading. Simply get down on your knees and acknowledge in the presence of God you're a sinner, realizing that on the center cross of Calvary there was one that bore the sting of death for every man. One who paid the price. And that one this evening is the great emancipator. And this evening if you will come to Jesus, if you will come to the Lord Jesus Christ in all your sin. We used to sing a hymn, I came to Jesus as I was, weary, worn, and sad. I found in him a resting place, and he hath made me sad. Will you gamble your soul in the carcass of the land of the world? Will you gamble your soul for a handful of honey? Will you fill your hands with the world's honey? Or will you turn this evening and repent of your sin and come to the Lord Jesus? Come like the woman last week. Come like the woman last week broken down in her car crying. Come like her repenting. And what did she find? She found a wonderful Savior waiting for her. One who loved her. One who died for her. And one who forgave her all her sins. My friends, as you listen this evening, may God give you help and may God give you strength. And as I close, may you pray Samson's prayer. May it be even in your car or in your home. Oh, Lord God, remember me. Oh, Lord God, remember me. Just this once. And he will hear your cry. And he will save you by his grace. That's just close in the word of prayer. Our Father, we commend all who've listened to the word of God this evening. We command all who have come out in their cars and faithfully come to the meeting this evening. And we especially pray for those who have listened who are not saved. We pray whether it be online or whether it be in the car. Many years have gone by and nothing has changed. They're still not saved. Oh God, burn this message into their hearts this evening. And move by thy power upon all who have listened. That we might hear of some coming. And putting their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. We just commit this meeting to thee. 
We pray that thou wouldst take our friends home safely on the road this evening. And we pray that there will be signs following the preaching of the Word of God this evening when someone will come and put their trust in the one who loved them and died for them. Oh God, may it be so. We ask all these things in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for coming. May the Lord take you home safely. If you'd like to speak with me, please feel free to wait behind. We'd be glad to speak to you, talk to you about the Savior. May the Lord take you home safely. God bless you.